Things are mending now. I see a rainbow blending now. We have a happy ending now. Taking, taking a chance on life. And in your own time. Number 41, Clivewood Avenue, the home of Mrs. Norma Rushmore, close personal friend of underworld boss Ronald Weems. On the same evening police announced they wanted to interview Weems in connection with Thursday's wage snatch at Dagenham, Mrs. Rushmore decided to take a holiday. And the house behind me stands empty. Or does it? She told her neighbours she was going away temporarily because of a wait, because of a, because of a pest infestation. And, and now the neighbours report, Look, would somebody please tell whoever it is to hump off until I finished? Okay, cut, cut. Morning. Morning. <laughs> We're investigating the story of this house is infected with fleas. Fleas? Yes. I uh, don't know what you're talking about. No. So you, you, you deny Mrs. Rushmore's story, do you? Mrs. Who? You're not Ronald Weems, are you, by any chance? Ah, ah. With you now. Yes, that Mrs. Rushmore. No, um, um, wrong house. You want Clivewood Avenue, number 41. Yes. But this is Clivewood Avenue. It, it says so. Number 41 on the door. Bloody kids. That explains it, see. Does it? Yes, uh, done it again. Change street signs around. You mean someone's changed the name? Oh, yes. Great popular sport around here. See, maze of houses, all rather the same. Kids swap street signs, sit back, watch visitors make fools of themselves. <laughs> Great fun. <laughs> Impressive, in a way. Sort of intellectual vandalism. Do you know where the real Clywood Avenue is? Oh, yes, certainly. Um, just down there. Uh, first on the left, second on the right, then last house on the left. Can't miss it. <laughs> Thank you. Henry Head, Thames News. That's right. Yes, sir. Hump off yourself. <laughs> Done it again. Done what, Tom? Kids, swap street signs. Now it says... Clivewood Avenue. Oh, not again. Yes, must phone someone to report it. Yes, well, you finish your breakfast first, Tom. Yes, Andrew. Huh. Must say, enjoyed having you here the past few weeks. Really. Oh, it's been very nice for me too, Tom. Well, it was good of you to let me. Is it like your search for a new flat? Well, no, no, not yet. But there's no particular rush, is there? No, 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 no. No rush at all. Huh. Yes, uh, just thought you might be happier. New flat. You know what I mean? Yes, uh, um, might stop these nightmares. Well, they're not that bad, Tom. Not bad enough, Alison. Four days in a row now. Had to come to my bed to calm down. <laughs> yes, thought you might just be more settled, flat of your own. Oh, well, I'll keep looking, Tom. Yes. Hmm. Tom, you haven't forgotten about lunchtime, have you? No, your friend, her husband. No, no, looking forward to it. Well, no, Roger, isn't her husband, Tom? They just live together. Ah, modern couple. Mm, well, Susan's always saying two can be cheaper than one, and I must say, the arrangement seems to work out very well. Good, 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 good. Ah, found it. Well, what's that, Tom? Flats vacant, Colin. Oh, don't you think it's a tricky time of the year at the moment to find flats? Mustn't lose hope, Alison. Persist. Something bound to turn up. Yes. Yeah. Need to go hunting for it. <laughs> Can't expect anything <laughs> to fall out of the sky. You know, can't expect things just to plop at your feet. Oh. Yes, um, help you at all? I think my shoots got caught up in your chimney. <laughs> Funny you should mention flat. Oh, yes, why? My wife's sister's got a cousin with a house full of flat. This is one of them's coming vacant this week. It sounds marvellous, Alison. Oh, I'll jot the address down for you, if you like. Thanks very much. Corporal, um, this uh, parachuting. Army exercise, is it? Oh, not an exercise, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's more of an initiative test. See, oh. They give us a list of items, and we have to get back to base before sunset with as many as we can find. Oh, I'd like a treasure hunt. That's right. The training instructors usually win, or the sergeants. We don't usually do very well. We're the regimental band, you see. <laughs> ah. What sort of things do you have to collect, exactly? I've got a list, actually, here. We, of course, nobody ever gets them all, I call. A quick at that, signed by Alec Bedser. Yeah, whoever he was. Alec <laughs> Bedser? Most famous cricketer who ever lived, that's all. Tom's got a bat signed by him, haven't 
dog. You haven't. Certainly have. Got bits of it missing. Got chewed by dog. Just says, Alec Bed. Now, a flower wouldn't matter. <laughs> I can borrow it. I'll look after it for you. Oh, certainly. It's a nice <laughs> fancy your name. Alec Bedsir. <laughs> Lou Walsh, Hill. Tom, didn't you say your great aunt gave you one of those? Great grandmother, Alison. Yes, yes, used to hang in hall. No idea where it is now. Two items? I don't believe me. It's probably in the attic somewhere. Back in a moment. Hello. I think he's got a stuffed rhino's head up there as well. Tom! Three, five, four, Now we've done the street map of Lima. Yes. Police handcuffs. Yes. Number 18, a ship's bell. Yes, got one of those. Boat, outside. Oh, no, Tom, it can't just be any old bell. It has to come from one of Her Majesty's warships. Frigate. Yes, it is a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Got another bell outside. Comes from Frigate, HMS Eagle, 1707. It's drowned off the Silly Isles, a cloudsly shovel. Interesting story. Tell you one day. Uh, this boat of these, sir. Is he keen on that sort of thing, is he? No, not really. He says he has enough trouble on dry land. He's tried to sell it, actually. What did he buy it for, then? Oh, he didn't buy it. He won it in a lager drinking competition in 1967. He's still trying to sell it? Oh, well, no. You see, it was stolen the day after he got it. The police only brought it back yesterday. Found it in Newport Pagnell. Some man had been breeding pigeons in it. Oh. Mm. I'd quite like him to keep it, actually. Do you know? I've always had a thing about boats, ever since I saw that film, High Society. Oh, yeah? Mm. Bing and Grace are on their honeymoon on their boat, for true love, and they're just lying there underneath the moon and the stars, and water's lapping up the side of the hull, and they're all happy and contented when suddenly Bing reaches down and he pulls out his accordion and they sing that song, True Love. Oh, it always used to send shivers up and down inside my vest, and I used to think, one day, maybe I'd be able to... Oh, we all have our little dreams. I suppose silly, isn't it? Could you pass the coffee, Corporal? Oh. Here we are, Mark. <laughs> Yes, this is splendid. What's next? I like this game. I don't think even you could get the last two, Mr. Trump. Uh, number 19 is a pair of knickers with the words, Hello, big boy, written across the front. <laughs> No, no, not quite my life. I didn't think it would be, no. And uh, number 20 is a picture of Shirley Williams in the nude. Ah, difficult. Yeah. I know one of the lads is prepared to give it a go with chloroform and a Polaroid, but... Still, Britain! Pardon? The photograph, it's in the new biography of Vera Britain. She was Shirley Williams' mother. And there's a picture in it of Shirley, six months old, on a bearskin rug in the news. Good God. <laughs> Remarkable woman, Alison. Yes. Librarian. I've got it upstairs. I'll run up and get it for you. I'm reading it at the moment. Um, I'll fetch the knickers down at the same time, if you like. <laughs> well, the lads don't ever believe all this, you know. <laughs> oh, glad to be of assistance, Corporal. And you, and you will check up on that flat, won't you? I'd like to think I've been of some assistance for all this. You know? yes, certainly, yes, yes. Very grateful. Oh, Corporal, you will let us know how you get on in the competition, won't you? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I've got to bring all this lot back anyway. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Yep. Nice fellow, the Corporal. Yes, isn't he? Oh, my word, it must be nearly one o'clock. We'll be late for lunch. She's just finishing off in the kitchen. Oh, good. Yes. Roger, this is my... Oh, um... Tom. So you're Tom. Yes, yes. Glad to see you. Yes, great pleasure. Heard a lot about you from, um, Alison. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Well, uh, do, do take a seat. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, white wine all right for everyone, is it? Absolutely oh, marvellous. Lovely, lovely. Lovely. Good, good. <coughs> Roger! <laughs> Won't be a minute. 
Roger and Susan have been living together for about five years now. Ah. Mm. She's always going on about the advantages of living together. You know, sharing the cooking, heating bills, that sort of thing. Well, could be right, I think. <laughs> I mean, I must say, they seem to be a walking advertisement for living together. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well suited to each other. Uh, uh, nice to hear. Yes, rare this day and age. Ah, um, sorry about the glasses. Uh, yeah. we're, we're having a bit of trouble with the dishwasher. I, 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 I keep breaking things. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Well, I must say, you're looking very tanned and healthy, Roger. Mm. Oh, oh, yes, that was uh, Venice last month. Oh, how lovely that Susan enjoyed it. No, she didn't. She wasn't allowed to go. Apparently, it was a business trip. Hello, oh. Susan. Hello, this Susan. is Tom. Tom, Tom. Hello, I... Tom. Don't get up, please. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, are you uh, planning to go abroad at all this year, Tom? No, 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 no. Never go abroad. Too frightened, really. Mistaken arrest, bad enough here. Abroad. We saw a film about a Turkish prison once. Midnight Express. Absolute. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Well, you, you, you mean you've never been abroad? No, never, no. Uh, oh, no, actually, tell a lie. Went to Cuba once. Not entirely intentional, though. Set out for Potter's Bar. <laughs> you never told me you'd been to Cuba. Oh, oh they don't like telling you where they've been all the time, Alison. A man likes to feel free to go where he wants without question, doesn't he, Roger? Uh, yes, I thought we'd promised we weren't going to talk about that now, oh, darling. Oh, sorry. Roger's very hot on promises. Uh, yeah. How are things at the library these days, Alison? Oh, very busy. You know, working late, you know. Oh, Roger has to work late a lot these days. When he's not going to his evening classes or his concerts, that is. Concerts? What, uh, classical music, is it? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, well, <laughs> Susan's not bothered, but I usually try and make a concert once a week. Yes, I was at the festival hall on Tuesday, actually. No, good heavens. Remarkable, marvellous concert. Brahms and Liszt, so were we. <laughs> what a pity we didn't see you. Mm. Ah, well, I tend to lie fairly low on these occasions. Well, come, come, Roger, you lie very well indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more potatoes. Oh, yes, thanks. Uh, oh, what about you, Alison? You didn't oh, very much no, first time. No, more for me, thank you, Roger. That was absolutely delicious. Did you enjoy so... this concert, did you, Tom? Uh, most of it, certainly. Yes, yes. Um, second half rather sad, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, the, uh, the pastoral, yes, a uh, very moving piece, I always think. Oh, yeah. no, I think Tom's referring to the fact the conductor died so soon after the interval, Roger. <laughs> you didn't mention any of this. Uh, Roger? Uh, no, no, I, I thought it might upset you. <coughs> no, right, right, morbid subject. Best so you both got home rather earlier than you expected? Yes. yes. Roger got home rather later than usual. Yes, well, I have explained about that, darling. The porter told me there were no more trains. Oh, yes. <coughs> Roger missed the 1017. Had to catch the milk train at 5 o'clock in the morning. Unbelievable. Uh, 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 how do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, railway officials not knowing their own timetable like that. Uh, other trains, are there? Oh, God, yes, several. Oh, there's Tom's an expert on the local railway timetable. Mm. Oh, I had a feeling he might be. Yes, he once spent several days down a pothole with the West Byfleet station master, didn't you, Tom? Yes, marvellous chap, really, absolutely remarkable. Uh, stuck there in flash flood for three days, cheered himself up by teaching me Southern Region Railway timetable. Ah, I, I often thought I might take up potholing, but, um... So there are several trains after the 10.17, are there? Oh, God, yes. 10.30, 11 o'clock fast trains. 10.44, 11.03 stopping trains. No buffet on the 11.03, of course. 11.17 change at Weybridge. Last train, 11.47. <laughs> well, I should have told you. Stuck down there like that makes the blood boil. It does, doesn't it? If you'll excuse me. about your potholing, Tom. I'm sure you'd be interested. Oh, yes, yes, please do. Well, not to tell, really. Just sort of burrowing underground like little mole. I quite saw the point of it. Mm -hmm. No, well, <laughs> it's an idea that appeals to me quite a lot at the moment. Oh, can we help, Tom? Oh, no, no, please, please. No, you've both done quite enough as it is. <laughs> not 
the door. Something wrong, isn't there? Really? Haven't noticed? <laughs> now, Roger seems to be dead, G. Oh, nice fellow, though. Music lover. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have brought you. I just thought if you saw how things... Oh, never mind. Oh. Um, <clears throat> how, how do you feel about pudding, everyone? <laughs> it's, um... It's baked Alaska. Baked Alaska, all right uh, for everyone, is it? It's absolutely marvellous. It's one of my favourites. Uh, jolly good. <laughs> Uh, yes, darling, the Alaska would be wonderful. Uh, <laughs> shall I take it in for you? <laughs> um, could we possibly leave the pudding for another time? I, uh, <coughs> I, I don't think Susan's feeling very well. Uh, of course, uh, absolutely understand. Uh, no problem at all. We have, uh, in fact, um, it's flat. Look at, uh, right well, I, I hope Susan's feeling better soon. Oh, I'm so sure it's just some bug she's picked up. Yes. I know. Yeah. Uh, there's any help with the washing up? Uh, I think that's being taken care of, Tom. Very good, yes. But I think if it's too far from the library. Yes. No, I, I think uh, probably next Well, that's the flat. Oh, um, well, they're uh, nicely proportioned rooms, aren't they, Tom? <laughs> well, well, I hope you didn't mind us just popping in like this. We were in the area, you see, having lunch with some friends. Oh, that's all right, dear. Any friends of Corporal Browning's are welcome here. Of course, it's, um, it's not everyone's taste in decoration. But um, I always tell my tenants, it's your flat. You do it up how you like. Yes. get him to put the wiring back to normal before he goes. He was a very interesting tenant. There are a couple of queries. Oh, across the hall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they're awfully nice lads. No, oh, no, no, no. Man who lived here before. Oh, no, no, he didn't live here. He just came here with his girlfriend every week for the odd evening. I think he has to leave. He has to go at the end of the month because his wife is suspicious or something, but I really don't... Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'll have to answer that. Not quite the sort of place I had in mind for you, Alison. But it's very cheap for its size, Tom. Alison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Tom? Probably not the right moment to say this to you, but... Spare room. My house. Yours as long as you want it. No need to rush off anywhere. Oh, that's very kind of you, Tom. Not kind at all, Alison. Longer you stay there, happier I shall be. Should have mentioned it before. Just one worry. Didn't want to lose you. Lose me, Tom? What do you mean? Not got a lot of friends, Alison. Hard hanging on to them. My disability. Easiest way to lose them, share a house with one. Share the house with a girlfriend once. Oh, what happened to her? Usual problem. Went off for picnic, found lovely spot. She went behind bushes to obey call of nature. Shot in the buttocks by Royal Marine Commander. <laughs> Hunting escaped leopard. Understandable mistake. She was wearing a fur coat at the time. Was she badly hurt? No, no, no. Tranquilizer dart. Unconscious for 36 hours. <laughs> Never spoke to me again. Well, it would take more than a silly little thing like that to make me not want to speak to you again, Tom. Agreed then, Alison. Oh, thank you, Tom. You know, two can live cheaper than one, and I know. Oh, so the... oh I'm very sorry about this, but the apartment isn't vacant after all. No? No, uh, no. Um, now that my fiancé no longer has to commute so often to New York, we've decided to make this our permanent home. Ah. Can you manage 
says, darling. Ah! Ah! What is it, dear heart? Aren't you feeling well? Uh, probably same thing Susan had. Mm. Susan? Mm. Who's Susan? Oh, Susan's Roger's... Mm. Roger's... Girlfriend? Of mine? Susan? <laughs> but uh, we both know Roger. Why are these people calling you Roger, Philip? Um, <coughs> oh, I'd like a word with you, Philip. In the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Not always true, Alison. What isn't, Tom? Two can live cheaper than one. Crockery bills, for instance. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not moving out anywhere tonight. Yes. It's been a long day, one way and another. <laughs> Oi, what's going on there? Oh, it's all right, sir. We've just finished. Finished? Yes, Brian's uh, just locking up. All right, Brian? Shouldn't have any more trouble there now, sir. But what sort of trouble are we having? Well, your infestation. The fleas. They're all dead now. Soon will be. Oh, my God. You'll be Mrs. Rushmore, I take it. No, I'm not. Oh. Is there something wrong? Everything wrong. Wrong woman, wrong house, wrong road. But it can't be. The street sign out there no, says... No, I'm afraid the local children have been swapping the street signs around. Really, I'm very sorry about all this. Oh, I don't... Well, it's not all bad, is it? I mean, we've had the house cleared of pests. Presumably free of charge. Oh, absolutely free of charge. Yes, we wouldn't dream and of... And you them. wouldn't have caused any damage inside? No, no damage. Exactly. What, exactly? Well, standard procedure, sir. Uh, we have to seal up all the windows and doors, and then we use a mixture of potassium permanganate and cyanide. It's very effective. But we do suggest, uh, recommend that uh, the occupants don't move back into the house for at least 48 hours. That's two days. Is that what it is? Oh, yes. <laughs> but where are you going to sleep tonight? Don't worry about it, Tom. I'm sure we'll think of something. Oh, if only knew. Do you know, this is probably as near to my little dream as I'm ever likely to get. Little dream? Mm. Oh, we're on a boat, and it's just you and me. The moon and the stars are shining down outside. Oh, I know we're not on the sea, Tom, but if you were to get out your accordion now... Accordion? <laughs> I'll settle for this. What's that noise? Noise? All right, lad. Somebody walk up the It's quite all right, Alice. Public highway. Usually entitled to walk up and down. Well, I suppose One, so, two, but... Three, two, two, three. <laughs> Chance will be back next week. For more late night comedy, next Thursday night sees a witty satire on racism in Australia, Barbecue Area. That's followed by the return of the award winning Tracy Ullman Show next Thursday night from 10.45. Thank you.